Hey, and welcome back to The Art of a Life Well Lived. I am Christine Regan Lake, and it's good to be here again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so um, today I want to talk to you about the differences between a male narcissist and a female narcissist. A lot of the traits do apply to both, but there are certain things that tend to be more oriented toward female narcissists and others that are more male narcissists. Of course, there's always exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, these are some of the differences between a male narcissist and a female narcissist. If you enjoy my content and you would like to subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. That helps to tweak my algorithm so that the you know, uh, YouTube search engine will, you know, recommend my videos to more people. And if you wanted to like or share, that'd be awesome. Anything you do to support the channel is so appreciated. Uh, it helps to get my message out to those who want and need to hear it. And please always give me your comment, your feedbacks, your questions, anything like that, because I love hearing from you and building this community together. Thanks. All right. So let's get started. So what are some of the differences between a male and a female narcissist? So the first primary difference with specifically a male narcissist, so male narcissists, generally speaking, tend to um, express and be very uh, like explosive and angry, right? So when a male narcissist gets triggered, they tend to explode. They can be very paranoid, um, always thinking someone's out to get them. I remember I worked for this one gentleman, very successful entrepreneur, and I, was, I only stayed about two months because I literally just could not work in that environment. So this, this was a gentleman who would really, really, really overcharge clients and um, you know uh, underpay the contractors that he was um, paying for that client you know to be on site working with them or whatever. So massive, massive margins. And eventually the client found out, I'm not exactly sure how, how high it was or whatever, um, you know, how they found out about the, um, the margin and how much money he was making, but they were very upset because they really felt like they were being taken advantage of. And I just remember him one day just like screaming and throwing the phone against the, the wall and he started cursing up a storm and I just thought to myself, I'm out. Like, I I can't work in this environment. I am a highly sensitive person. I am very sensitive to energy. And I mean, I don't think it's healthy for anybody to, to work in that environment. But this was a gentleman who, because he was taking advantage of his clients, he thought other people, he was always paranoid that someone was taking advantage of him. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, that's exactly what he was doing. And of course, that's his viewpoint, right? Like he knows he's taking advantage of his client. So he assumes everybody else is taking advantage of him and had a, this explosive temper, throwing things, cursing, all that stuff. And it was just a very hostile work environment. And thank God I was only there for like two, three months. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a very short stay because I was like, I can't work in this environment. So on the, um, on the opposite end, how does a female typically react when she gets triggered? Well, a female will typically punish her victims by withholding attention and affection. One of the key ways that they can do that, which is very common, is to withhold sex. So now you're in a relationship, you're dating someone, or you're in a marriage, and you know all of a sudden now they just start cutting off the sex, and it's just, you know, that's their way of withholding you and withholding from you and punishing you for not doing as they say, doing what they wanted, things like that. It's all about manipulation and control. Um, it is very dysfunctional and it's, you know, to be honest, it's when a woman does that, she's really walking a slippery slope because when you deny sex to your partner in a, you know, a monogamous relationship or in a marriage, you are essentially inviting in a third party. You are inviting in infidelity because it is completely unnatural to expect your partner to stay in a committed relationship with you when you withhold sex, given that sex is a very natural, beautiful thing. And especially when you're in a, in a relationship where it's agreed that, you know, this is not an open relationship. We are monogamous to each other. We are committed to each other. And for you, for that woman to expect her husband to stay with her and to be faithful 
when she's refusing him sex is completely irrational and delusional. And it's, it's a very dangerous slippery slope to, to walk because you're really in inviting in infidelity. And, and if it happens, the person who is withholding sex has to take a full 50% responsibility for being a, bringing a causal variable to that scenario. It is, it is completely dysfunctional. It's unhealthy. It's destructive. It's destructive to your partner's well-being, their self-esteem, their self-worth. And so it's a very, very vicious way to get back at someone. Okay. So what's the next one? So a male narcissist is more likely to utilize like power and control and like their status, right? So this is very typical of the, you know, the Harvey Weinstein Me Too scandal, right? So this was a gentleman who was in complete power. He knew that he had the ability to make and break careers. And so he used that full well to his advantage to take advantage of women, to use it as leverage, um, you know, whether gaining what he wanted manipulatively through coercion or eventually, you know, there was the physical stuff that was just pure force, right? So um, they use, men will tend to use their position of power, status, and authority to execute their, you know, their control over the people in their environment to demand the kind of, you know, attention, respect, things like that, that they want from another person. So in terms of the female narcissist, so a female narcissist will primarily, um, like I said, she will use both her, um, her ability to withhold and her affection and things like that and just ignore, right? So it's a way to ignore where you're just all of a sudden you're non-existent, right? Um, this is very common practice to, you know, where the mother will like shun the child or the husband or whatever, doesn't talk to them, ignoring as a form of punishment, right? So like, you know, something has happened between the husband and the wife and the, w the wife just completely ignores him and pretends he doesn't exist. Ignoring someone's existence is one of the most destructive things you can do. They actually proved this in the rice experiment. I believe it was Dr. Masaru um, Emoto who did the rice experiment. And they pr basically proved that the intention of ignoring someone is far more destructive. What they did was they had three rice bowls, one rice bowl they would speak to every day, say, I love you. One, they just said, I hate you. And the third one they completely ignored. And they found that the bowl that, of rice that was told, I love you, actually stayed fresh the longest. The one that um, was told, I hate you, started to decom decompose and rot a little faster. And then the, um, the one that was completely ignored, rotted, turned black very, very quickly. So to ignore someone is actually the most destructive thing you can do. It's being mean to them isn't the worst you can do. Ignoring someone, completely ignoring them and telling, telling them that they don't, you know, you're basically essentially saying you don't exist. I think probably the reason that that is the most destructive one is because, you know, we have a tribal nature and going all the way back to the beginning that like if you were an outcast, if you were cast out of the tribe and no longer a part of it, it was basically certain death. So ignoring someone is like is like soul death, right? It's like you are you are cut off and it is the most destructive thing that you can do and that is a tactic that female narcissists definitely use. Uh, when they have been triggered and when they're trying to get back at somebody. So who, how, how do they differ in terms of where they get their narcissistic supply? Well, for the most part, males will usually turn to their primary partner to get their narcissistic supply. Now, it's also important to understand that like the way a narcissist typically works is there's usually a cadre of people, right? So they usually have like a primary source of supply who they get it to, but they might have like secondary sources like coworkers, right? So their spouse is their primary source. 
Um, secondary sources could be coworkers, friends, things like that, people that they feed off of that they will leach that narcissistic supply from, um, you know, so they can rotate and have multiple sources. But the primary one for males tends to be the romantic partner. For females, it can be either the romantic partner is the primary supply or their children. Female narcissists actually look at their children as extensions of themselves. And one of the most destructive things that a female narcissist will do when she's, um, you know, she sees her children as an extension of her is that say things start to go south in the marriage, the female, the mother will, the wife, mother will speak ill of the father to the children and the, the, she will plant negative ideas into the minds of the children about their father. She will literally poison them against her, against him. And she does this because she wants them on her side. And if she hates him, they're supposed to hate him, right? Then if they make up and now she's back in love with the husband, now she turns back to the kids and it's like, now you're supposed to love him. Now you hate him. Now you love him. Now you hate him. Now you love him. So she forces her children to be at her whim in terms of how she's feeling about the partner. That parental alienation, and men can do it too. I, I, I knew some, a client who she had, um, she went through a divorce. She had five children. She'd be, been a stay at home mother you know, homeschooled them, grew their own food. And then she was married to a doctor. And when they first met, it was when he was first starting out. But then through the marriage, he got more successful. He made started making a lot of money, became very influential and kind of totally went to his head. And he just completely changed before her eyes. And next thing you know, they're going through a divorce. And he was vicious in the divorce with her. He literally demanded that, um, you know, he get full custody. He ended up getting full custody. She couldn't even see her kids. Um, he uh, basically now got a new girlfriend and then t told the kids that the kids had to call her mother, call her mom, you know, his new girlfriend. She was devastated. I am telling you, absolutely devastated. And this was the manipulation. This is the parental alienation. So males can do parental alienation. It is very, very common for women to do it because women specifically see children as an extension of themselves, which men don't typically do that as, as much. So those are some of the differences between a male narcissist and a female narcissist. So I'll just recap. So the first one is that the males tend to be very explosive and angry and you know they, they, they process it out, push it out. Uh, it's an outward flowing energy thrusting it on other people. I remember I dated somebody and we were only dating for like, mm, I think three, four months and something came up and he got ticked off about something and he completely exploded and started screaming at me. And I was like horrified and I thought, well, it was over. <laughs> I mean, for me, that was it. I, you know, I, I I love my dad, but when I was growing up, my dad was a rageaholic and I have zero tolerance for that. I will not put up with being screamed at, but I was, there was a part of me that was so grateful that that happened because I was able to see him for who he was and that kind of explosive, rageful temp temper. There was nothing that had transpired in the three or four months that we were dating that would have given him any level of justification for freaking out on me like that. And I just thought, uh, I got your game, I got your number, <laughs> fella, I'm out of here, and that was it. And um, so males have the, the, um, the pattern of being explosive, exploding on other people, being very aggressive, yellers, screaming, things like that. Females, they're the opposite. They will withhold their energy. They will uh, embrace more of a, um, like the withholding sexless relationship, it's to punish you. Uh, the men will utilize their power and control. Women will ignore you, and they. But and narcissists typically, male narcissists typically get 
their supply from their main partner. That's usually their primary source, whereas females can have either the partner or their children. But women are very prone to doing parental alienation where they um, program the kids against the father. They really poison them, their relationship with them by telling them things inappropriately about their marriage to the children, which destroys the relationship between the parent and the child. And both, one of the things that is congruent to both of them is that they both go and turn to codependent people. They typically go after empathetic, empaths, empathetic people who are very kind, loving, generous, overgivers, right? So the narcissist who is a taker finds the overgiver, the codependent, and takes advantage of them. And the codependent also has to realize that they have a portion to play in the responsibility because if you're codependent that's dysfunctional that is your wounding that needs to be healed but generally speaking both the male and the female narcissist will prey upon codependent overgivers because they're an easy target that they know they will get a very rich supply of, of narcissistic supply to feed their ego so those are some of the differences between the male and the female narcissist. I hope you found value in that. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the description box and we'll chat about it some more. I definitely am going to do another video coming up that will talk about all the different kinds of uh, narcissists because there's several different kinds. There's the covert narcissist, the overt narcissist, the somatic narcissist, the um, cerebral narcissist, the malignant narcissist. So I'm definitely um, putting together my notes and doing the research on that to just share some of the most important things of understanding the distinctions between the different kinds of narcissists. But I hope you found value in that and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.